forth, as opposed to Incendio just being able to do whatever he wants. So Incendio is just like, wait, he's not doing the thing that I was afraid of, so cool. No I don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Winner's finals, right? Uh, yep, winner's finals. So it's first to three, uh, Zephkai versus Ender's J. It's going to be a continuation of the, uh, we had an incredibly close set between Zeph and Ender's uh, last time that we had a tournament like yeah. this. It looks like he uh, he's the one person that's actually forced Zeph to go uh, away from his Sophie. Yeah, and uh, was it, uh, did I commentate with you uh, when they first? Uh, when they last played, where we're just like, huh, I wonder why he's going for the Shampoo instead of the Sophia. It sounds right, and I think we kind of, at least I uh, I never actually talked to Zeph about it, but I was always under the impression that he did it so that he had an I-12 CE to punish stuff. Yeah. That was my guess. Yeah, I think that was kind of like the, the gist of it. It's kind of funny, because I would imagine that Enders has at least a relatively solid amount of experience in this matchup, if only just due to Jordan. Yeah, a lot of back and forth, a lot of patient gameplay. Ender's definitely eating a lot, taking a lot more damage. Definitely looks like Zeph needs to warm up. Yeah, if, uh, if I recall correctly, he's been pretty much going Sophia all night, so it could be effective just warming up. Yeah, that's possible. Oh god. But it could be that if this is three straight rounds, then Zephkai could be considering a Sophie switch. I feel like that won't happen, but I might be wrong. But yeah, Zep, Zep picking up on uh, the times that Enders wants to sidestep now. Whoa. He gets the ring out there. But uh, yeah, Enders has really been getting paid off by these slightly awkward, really enclosed sidesteps uh, that have really been kind of killing Zep so far. So yeah, a lot more AA, so that is kind of risky due to wall rising A. Yeah. But it, it's like, as long as like Sephikai like constantly shake up his timings, then like he can like get around like Rising A and even like punish it. If, uh, I think he got the wave of it there. I don't know if it's gonna matter though. Alright. Yeah. To... Oh yeah, that Rising A. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to deal with. Uh, Zeph needs to pepper in a little bit of like... More... Yeah, I mean, you got the CE punish, that's not even really gonna come... It's going to put him in a point where he could get killed by the second CE. Who's that? Okay, there you go. Decides not to spend the meter, so he decides to go for dip instead. <gasps> Seth, you were greedy. You greedy, greedy monster, you. That was great. Right. Yeah, you, wa you won it anyway, but you did eat a little bit more guard pressure than he needed to. Yeah, we'll Still see got that, that lethal hit. Right. Ooh, nice stuff. Yeah. Kind of ah. Guess wrong. Oh god. And you're staying pretty good control for the most part in this round. Yeah, he seems pretty comfortable with the idea of just eating whatever lows that uh, Zeph is going to pull out and then just use backdash to get out of the situation. Yeah, just having the confidence, yeah. It's like, I can take this chip damage, but... I'm yeah, you see how, like, Enders was wrong, like, four times there? Uh while trying to back up to the wall, and then he was right once and he won. That's kind of the difference we're talking about. And it's, like, gotta be frustrating for a Sevakai, just, like, kind of dealing with, the, like, this, uh, Servi backdash, where Chum Hwa doesn't have, like, you know, the strongest tools for, uh, approaching, or the longest range to, like, catch the back step. Yeah, you just have to be, like, really calm at slowing everything down, you know? Yeah. He can do it. He's done it before. Oh, yeah, he's Sevakai. Um, but... Chum Hwa or Sevakai? Yep, it's Chum Hwa. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he's definitely just decided that this is the way to go against uh, at least Ender specifically. Yeah, just committing. Uh, but it's not even just kind of like a like a character matchup disparity. It's just kind of a just the, the play style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's interesting. Uh, Zeph decided to keep the stage. I feel like this stage, at least in my opinion, is kind of the exact opposite of the 2B stage we were talking about before, it, where a lot of people like to keep with this stage, even if it doesn't necessarily provide their character an advantage, simply because it means that you don't have to deal with stages like the 2B stage, because it's about as default and neutral as you can get. Yeah, I guess uh, you can say like less randomness on a stage like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got rung out, oh yeah, that shit's your fault. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, <laughs> nobody was surprised with that rung out. 
Um, the walls in this stage, I know we're probably cursing and some weird crazy shit is gonna happen later on, but like, I this, this stage is about as consistent as it gets. The walls don't do anything crazy, the the rocks you know, along the ring edge don't just suddenly disappear, and then it turns out you were actually in ring out trouble when you weren't, or you didn't think you were. Plus, like, uh, whenever I go into uh, Cervantes, uh, like, against Cervantes and I have the choice of choosing a stage, uh, I'm always terrified of getting, like, an all-wall stage against Cervantes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, definitely correct to keep the stage, and Zephyr just looking so strong right now, just pushing him into a corner and having a huge life lead. Um, no chance of uh, unbreakable grab here, and no chance of doing a guard impact with Zephyr's timings being so uh, sporadic and strong. So this is kind of the thing that tends to happen, especially with two players that have played against each other in virtually all of these online tournament kind of things since COVID started. Um, we're effectively seeing like a hot potato kind of thing. So Ender's initial idea is that, wow, no punish there at all. Um, the initial idea that Ender's had in terms of how to play this uh, this matchup seemed to be the way to go. And so Zeph is adapting to how Ender's is playing and right. Ender's is timing, right? So. Even though he's basically going to win this, I mean, Ender still has bars so we can do a lot of stuff still, but um, let me see if he's able to, okay. Uh, even if Zeph wins this, then it's effectively a game of hot potato, right? So now it's on Ender's to try and adapt to what Zeph is doing. And Zeph guy uh, was doing like a lot of a kind of like, um, uh, like a lot of micro movement stuff that is just kind of Welcome to create opportunities for like you know big damage. Yeah, uh, he's, and, like, he's trying to be a little bit stickier, just kind of being in Ender's face without actually um, betting on anything. You know, I yeah, think they yeah, got yeah. how Murray's stage keeping a uh, right? risk low, but you know staying sticky, uh, as you yeah. say, on an Ender's J. And then like, I guess you can say you, you said he's not taking bets. Uh, I'd say like maybe just take small bets. Like, huh? I'm gonna try a side step because he might two A plus B. Okay, nothing happens. That's fine. <laughs> But yeah, it's just a matter of like, it's very reminiscent of how you kind of play Amy in this matchup, where it's like, what does Zeph want to get? Zeph wants to get some of these launchers that are safe and everything, right? But in the first game, Enders was just constantly sidestepping them or doing stuff like this. And so what ended up happening was that Zeph was trying to force him to eat these lows to try and make Enders take the mid. But Enders was like, nah, I'll just take the low and then like leave. And that's what I'll do. <laughs> and it seems like that's what he's reverting back to. Um, Man, when Enders wins, it's so quick. It's difficult to get any kind of thought out there before the round is over. Yeah. So, nice stuck. No so much damage, and that's a great side step. Not the biggest damage, but damage nonetheless. Jeez, there's a lot of precise surgical movement going on right now. The problem is, is that Zep is just, yeah, especially on these wake-ups, he seems to be getting mad impatient. I don't know what's going on. Alright, he's got wall pressure now. Now he doesn't. Like, Zephyrkai does love the, kind of like the, um, I guess the reverse mix-up opportunity for getting up on the ground. Like, Zephyrkai, like, rarely gets up on the ground, like, safely. He tries to get up on the ground, like, doing something, because he tries to take it, you know, he tries to go for that counter hit. He knows, you know, the opponent wants to go for, like, Oki, and he tries wow. to, like, hit against him. Oh. Uh, but... I like how when Enders wins, Normally, the round is like 10 to 20 seconds, and when Zeph wins, there's like maybe 5 to 10 seconds left on the clock. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's the small Chinese girl damage. Yeah. Or French. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 3B there? I, I don't know about some of these bets that, that Zeph is taking. I feel like they're getting them blown up. The movement stuff is working, and when he decides to be patient, but when he's being aggressive, especially in uh, disadvantageous situations, just yeah. really seems to be blowing him up. I don't know. Uh, to his credit, that was kind of like the the first time we experienced that mix-up, so he, he, I guess he just decided to go for it. Um, yeah, but we've seen stuff that's similar, and so you can kind of get an idea as to like the yeah. player profile. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Yeah, so he's just, just been like, above that and just be like, you know what, I think he's going to sidestep, because he's been doing that. Uh, a lot. Anders is changing up his strategy now, too. He's going for smaller, safer stuff. Alright. Oh, just Oki all day. His like, Oki is definitely getting a lot better. Um, it's, it, it, it's becoming a lot more profitable. Now he's catching Anders trying to get uh, desperately out of uh, the movement uh, because the Oki has been so successful. 
you know, they just like put him like way like that Oki Dam, you just put him way ahead on the damage race and then he just like close out the round cleanly with just like catching movement and just like just poking him down. Yeah, that launcher ended up catching uh, Enders' sidestep. He's gonna try to use Soul Charge to try and create something, but he's getting a, uh, Enders is getting a little bit impatient here. Zeph is definitely capitalizing. Cool. Okay. And now it's Zephakai's turn to get like impatient. Like he really just kind of wanted to like stop him from shooting guns, but like Enders J just profited from a huge whip punish. So like I think Zephakai just changing his game plan like at the last moment definitely cost him that round. Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, I mean. You know, again, you're talking about such an explosive character, quite literally due to gunshots with Cervantes, yeah. that it, the, the amount of wrong guesses that Zeph can make is honestly very, very little. Mm -hmm. uh, as, you know, in, in that one situation, he just thought, it was like one of the first times that I've seen Zeph duck in a, into a Cervantes 3B. Mm -hmm. uh, and I assumed that he was under the impression Enders would not use a 3B simply because Zeph had bar. And so the 3B was going to be punished by the CE. Uh, and he wasn't betting that he would, that Enders would take that kind of bet. But Enders put him wrong, be like, you know what? I'm crazy. Three B. And if he was, and if he was right, he won the entire game. Yeah. So, was that crazy? Mm -hmm. It's one of those like you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that how you got your Ooh. dub? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is this? Oh, okay. He's going for the max gunshots, not the max damage. Okay, these guys are scared of each other. <laughs> Scare each other, mad respect. Oh, really? Really wanted that rising A there. Yeah, I feel like anytime these guys, it's really, they're putting themselves in such uncomfortable situations. Wow, okay. That's great. Uh, they're, they're putting themselves into such uncomfortable situations that it's a matter of like, who gets punished the hardest for making more bad decisions? Oh, no punish on that, huh? Yeah. They're like they're they're hardly like letting each other like get away from like making mistakes. Um there's some like edge cases where just like, okay, so like, you know, the angle is a little off or like a little too slow, but uh yeah. Now Zeph is uh, getting this kind of timing really, really solidly. Where there, there were just a handful of situations in the previous game where Anders would miss space some of his pokes and allow Zeph to get a whiff punish. Now it seems like he's sticking in as close as he can. <laughs> That's the first time I've actually ever seen an RE interaction with that move. Oh! Alright, what does he get out of this? Alright, he's gonna set up for Oki. Yes, he is. That makes sense. And that's the round, right? No, it isn't. So, <gasps> so oh that's my. gonna be the round. It's too far away, yeah. Oh boy. That was a uh, scare for Ender's J because it's. Yeah. Because Zephka is one of those, like, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile kind of guys. Right. <laughs> so he could. Who was capable of making a comeback, but luckily Ender's J was able to close that out anyway. Yeah, um, Chinese right. swordsmen are not normally all that great against guns. <laughs> normally. I mean. Oof. Maybe you have an advantage up close, but yeah. Guns are Enders is essentially just resigned in a lot of these neutral situations to just eat the low, and that's just the way it's going to be. So yeah, we're going to see some off the wall stuff here, I assume. Huh, totally cool with just taking that. Uh... All right, he's in yellow again. He's really in red. <laughs> if he can end this without taking that guard break, it's going to be huge. Oh no! Lots of guard pressure. That's, oh, wait, not... that's not a push. No. So he decides to take a 3B. This is huge. So he's going to get that meter back, but he's got to deal with this guard break now. And Enders is going to have a bar, assuming he doesn't just get run over by Zeph's uh, pressure right now. But I think that's what the Zeph guy is going for. He's just like, he's not going to give him a chance. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah even I don't know so much about that 3B. I'm not sure what he was reading there. I guess he was trying to catch up backdash. I'm not sure. He's going to have to deal with Oki in this kind of situation. He cannot make a mistake like that again. And that's game. Again! I think he just kind of let his just like his natural like muscle memory just like kick in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of like an autopilot kind of situation. I guess he thought that he really had to take a big read in order to get back into the game, which might have been true. But I don't know. But All right, two and two. Welcome to the stage of history. Or like just kill maybe killing a throw attempt or, or something. But yeah, uh, Ender's J is capable of like you know. The kind of self-talk of uh, 
Okay, yeah, I just gotta like chill. Like if I have like any kind of advantage, whether it's like guard gauge damage or uh, a health lead, then like I just like need to chill. He decided to keep the stage. This is definitely a heavy uh, amount of hot potato going on. So one could argue that Enders is in the uh, the driver's seat for this round. But Zep is <laughs> the start of the round 3B. I mean, he's not punishing it, so it makes sense. And I do like uh, keeping the stage because like the, the amount of like, you know, oh, amount of wall stuff. Dead, like, yeah, the wall stuff. Oh my yeah. God, rich hard all day. Like, it was just like he was not getting punished for it. And but at the same point, like, you know, you're dealing with situations like this where you don't have any room to run around. Uh, so there, it's, it, it's a poison chalice to a certain degree. Interesting. So that could be an argument for, uh, you know, changing the stage to give NRJ uh, more room to like, kind of move around. I'm a very argumentative guy. <laughs> because, uh, you know, having flashbacks that one round where NRJ is like literally just like, kind of backstep and Zephkai was like kind of like, you know, felt forced to try to engage and just like made himself whiff and NRJ was able to get, you know, maximize on that mistake. I appreciate that Anders is peppering with smaller moves every once in a while. He just has to get worried about, um, oh wow, what a step. Uh, he has to be worried about Zeph. Yeah, he's he's getting a little bit too desperate here. It really seems like Anders' stamina ran out of get, uh, ran out of juice, essentially. Yeah, he has to try and create potentially these situations of using smaller attacks once he's in and making Zeph run into bigger stuff. As he's trying to get in. Here we go. It seems to be the story of this round so far. Yeah. Like, doing just, like, safe space control stuff, like A6, and then just, like, mercilessly punish those whiffs. Just okay. like this. Wow. All right. He had to spend a bar in order to get that round, but, uh, you know, let's see if he ended up giving Zeph too much leeway and already giving him two rounds up. Not to mention, he's going to have a bonus bar, assuming that uh, Zeph actually uses a meter in this round. Well, like, I, I think that round actually serves as, like, at least, like, a solid foundation to just, like, work with. Like, if all Yeah, it's just a matter of if it was too late, you know? <laughs> oh, no punish, though. Good side step, yeah, just not, not getting this damage. Just maybe a frame too off too late. Oh, no! That's it totally makes sense, yeah. I honestly feel like that one interaction is why Seth decided to pick this character against Ender. Yeah. Because now that's he can't be free, and that's game. Yep, yeah, he gave him too much of a leash, and yeah. then Zeph adapted immediately after losing uh, one round. So, pretty solid stuff. Always very exciting to see these two guys play. Oh, no, yeah, def 